Hey, you. Yeah, you. Come here for a minute. I want to talk to you. The views expressed on this broadcast of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show are those of the co-host and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of our affiliates. The topics and opinions on today's show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice. Take 12 Radio is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here's your host, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, The Monty Man. You? That's right. What? Good guys, bad boys, we're all the same. Saved by grace is the name of the game. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay your burden down. That's right. Welcome to Tank 12 Radio. It is good to have you with us. This is Speaker Monday, where we normally have a 12 step speaker. Uh, a circus speaker from a 12-step fellowship, that is, uh, sharing their experience, strength, and hope. This week, you get moi. You get me. And I am a 12-step speaker. I've, I've done plenty of those. And, uh, of course, I'm your host here at Take 12 uh, Recovery Radio at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. What I would like to share with you today, this show isn't going to be real long, uh, but what I would like to share with you today is uh, a little bit of my experience when it comes to um, depending on other people's opinion of me to be okay with me. And, and, and I, I want to share this with you because I know so many of you out there suffer from this unneedlessly. Uh, and it's not something that just happened overnight. Uh, most of us have had experiences in our life uh, that uh, you know fueled this kind of unhealthy dependence on other people uh, approving a, of us for us to be okay with ourselves. And let me give you an example. Um, one of the things that, that happens to us uh, right off the bat when we're born is we are automatically dependent on our mother. And, uh, you know, it's it, it, we, we didn't choose it. We didn't choose our parents. We didn't choose where we were born. We had no choice in the matter. Uh, and we were just born. And we learned to be a dependent. Well, even in the womb, we learned to be dependent on, on mom. And when we were born, we learned to be, we, we are all, we don't learn to be, we're all automatically dependent uh, to be fed, to be burped, to be, to be coddled uh, for security to feel uh, uh, warm and protected, right? That's just a natural thing. And then as we get a little older, we are still dependent on on mom and dad. Uh, maybe some of you live, you know, we're, we're, we're very small and, and come from a, a divided home. Maybe you were dependent on, on one parent. But you were dependent on an adult, on somebody else in your life. Maybe a grandparent or... A, and her uncle, uh, but you were dependent. You had to be. And as you got older, you became a little more independent, right? Uh, and you started feeling the need to kind of break away a little bit. And that's really healthy. The problem is when, is when we don't break away and, 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 you know, we are instilled with this dependency on others from birth, just naturally. And uh, one of the things that 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 is of concern uh, with people that I work, you know, with me, with people that I work with, is do they have an unhealthy dependency on other people as adults? Because I have uh, in my past, in my early recovery, and all through my uh, teenage years. And my my drinking career as an alcoholic. 
Uh, I had a friend who um, I considered my best friend. I I, I forcibly uh, bestowed that title upon him. He he really didn't want it. Uh, and for twenty five plus years, I demanded that he be my best friend. Because don't you know, everybody should have a best friend. Now, I've talked about this before. I I did a show back in 2008 called When Close Friendships Come Crashing Down. Um, And I will tell you that that most friendships, even even really healthy ones, are a little bit one-sided. One side's a a little more committed than the other. It's just natural. You know, some people uh, in relationships, the one person will maybe have a tendency to write more or pick up the phone or or text a little more or, you know, that kind of thing. And and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just natural. Uh, But if you're at the other end of that and that really makes you uncomfortable because um, you're you're the one that's actually doing that, and they're not responding in the way that you think they should respond, then something's not healthy. Uh, a prime example of that is, is social media. Uh, you know, um, we misunderstand what people mean because we can't see their body language. You don't hear the tone of their voice. And we read these texts and we get offended and we respond uh, maybe in a not so nice manner, and the other person ignores us, or perhaps they, maybe just a normal conversation is going on, and something happens. The person goes offline. Um, they have to reboot. Maybe their phone goes dead. Maybe they're busy in the middle of something, and they don't respond right away. And some of you out there get really ticked because don't you know they should be paying attention to me? Well, that's how I was before technology. Uh, when it came to other people, I, I was like that. And uh, I was very uh, much addicted to your acceptance of me for me to be okay with my insides. <clears throat> and that's one of, the, one of the reasons that I abused uh, alcohol so severely because I was able to medicate uh, those feelings of abandonment and, and uh, uh, feelings of, of, of self-loathing and, and you know, no self-worth and and that kind of thing. And here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Uh, For some of you, as it was for me, and maybe you're going through this right now and you're not liking what I'm saying because this really gets real personal. But for some of you, as with me, um, it wouldn't have mattered if the people in our lives had paid 100% attention to us all the time. It wouldn't be enough. Because they can never fulfill the expectations we put on them. Because they're human beings. They're not deity. They're not perfect. And uh, this was uh, this was a source of many problems for me uh, for many, many, many years. And so I just want to encourage you, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, or maybe you have a friend or a loved one who is overbearing and is just, you know, closing off your spirit to them because they're so demanding uh, for your attention. Let me tell you, they're not doing that because they're, they're being mean. They're not, they're not trying to, to uh, scare you off. There's something going on where they have an unhealthy dependence on other people instead of their creator. Um, I'm going to, going to refer to these two uh, phrases at the end of the show. Uh, trust God and love people. That's the first one. And the second one is, we are powerless over other people's choices. Uh, and, and so I'm going to bring those back in, into the topic here uh, here shortly. Uh, but we're, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want to uh, unpack this poem uh, that many of you have heard. Uh, it may have been even overheard are over um, published. I don't know, but there's a real, real powerful reason why I want to share this with you. So don't go away. This show is sponsored by Origins Behavioral Healthcare. Here is their promo and also a brand new promo for the 12 Step Gazette. We'll be right back. As men and women who have recovered from utterly hopeless states of addiction ourselves, we know all too well what it's like to battle addiction daily. We are Origins Recovery Centers. 
Here at Origins, we have taken that which we have learned along the way, excised anything unhelpful and unnecessary, infused it with the latest medical research and innovative therapeutic methods, and created what we know to be the absolute gold standard in substance abuse treatment. And Origins provides the most preeminent aftercare and relapse prevention program available in the United States. For a free confidential clinical assessment, call toll-free 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, delivering real solutions for real families. Hey, look, running around in the meetings. Gobbling up gallons of bad coffee, flapping his gums wherever he can bring a smile to a hurting face. It's Slogan Man! We know cute little platitudes and sayings on the wall in 12-step meeting won't keep you sober, but they sure will make you think, consider, and even laugh your way through an otherwise crappy day. Can't wait to get to your home group to hear those slogans over and over and over and over again? No need to! Pick up a copy of the 12 Step Gazette and join the adventures of Slogan Man. Visit www.12stepgazette.com and subscribe today. Slogans and platitudes are no substitute for working the steps, but Slogan Man is very cool. All right, and uh, welcome back uh, to Speaker Monday. Uh, you get me as a speaker uh, this week. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, putting unhealthy uh, expectations on other people to be okay with yourself. It is a deadly, deadly cocktail. Uh, it will take you out. It will cause resentments to be built. And we know what we say about resentments, right? Um, it is just not something that you want to get familiar with. If you are familiar with it, you need to break free from it. And the only way you can do that, the only possible way that you can break free from being dependent on other people's approval of you is by shifting your dependency. Because we will, we, we will always be dependent on something. There is a healthy dependency to be had, and that is upon God. Your heavenly father will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never let you down. He may not respond the way you think he should, but he knows what's best for you. He's got your back. He's the only one that does 100% because he's perfect. People aren't. And as hard as people will try to to fill your expectations and my expectations, they will always fall short because they are human. And if we are going to spend our time being ticked off at them and holding resentments and becoming bitter because they don't respond the way we think they should, then we are going to be very bitter people for a very long long time, if not until the day we die. Some of you are like that right now. You're angry, you're bitter, and you think you deserve to be. You have the right to be because somebody wronged you. And, and, and I'm not here to suggest that if somebody abused you, sexually uh, abused you or beat you, or, or verbally abused you to the point to where you, you felt like you were a piece of garbage, that, that that's justified. I'm not saying that. But, but if you're going to survive this, then you've got to understand that you are powerless over other people's choices. And the only one you can trust 100% without fail <clears throat> excuse me, is the creator, the one who created you, the one who loves you unconditionally. That, that's, just, that's just truth. That's not fact. Fact changes. Fact, you know, I'm holding, I'm holding uh, the microphone with my left hand. That's a fact. Now I just put it in my right hand. Oop, that's a fact. Facts change. Truth never changes. And the only one I know that can fulfill truth, truthfully, honestly, 100% perfectly, is my Heavenly Father. And if you have a problem with that, you may want to work a fourth step around God. It might be a good idea. 
I, w- I want to share this this poem with you. L- listen, uh, people come into our lives for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes it's very selfish. Sometimes they want to use us. Sometimes they they, they need friends. Sometimes it, it's it's God directed. Uh, sometimes it's just the way it is. Sometimes we meet people and become friends <clears throat> and loved ones uh, by meeting them on the job, meeting in the church or synagogue or place of worship. Uh, maybe a 12-step meeting, you've gotten very close to somebody. Uh, th- you know, there's a Rotary Club, Boy Scouts, wh- whatever it is, Girl Scouts. Somewhere along the line, you've run into people and met people that you've become close with, and I'll bet you that there's not anybody with an earshot of me that hasn't experienced some heartbreak when it comes to a conflict with somebody they care about. And in some cases, those people disappear from our lives. Now, I'm not saying literally. Sometimes you see them on Facebook every day and you're getting more angry and more angry because they're not talking to you. They won't forgive you for what you did. They they won't own up to what they did for whatever reason. And every time you see them, you're infuriated. You know how I know? Because I've been there. And I'm eligible to be there again if I do not keep vigilant on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. Um, People are the other people are the number one source of resentment or, or, or or, our contributors, number one contributors to us building resentments. Listen, people don't give them to us. We build them ourselves. Nobody, wraps up a resentment, puts it in a box and gives it to you and me. We we build it ourselves. And once we realize uh, what, what purpose people have in our lives, we know what to do with that. We, we, once we know what to do with it, we, we do better. Once we know better, we do better in most cases. So see if this fits for you. If you've got somebody in your life that you just, you're scratching your head, you're going, I don't understand why they just walked out of my life. You really have to take an honest self-assessment. That's what humility is, an honest self-assessment. Because you probably have a part in it, as much as you don't want to hear that. Um, but maybe you don't. So listen to this poem. Many of you have heard it many times, but really listen to it. Uh, This poem is entitled, A Reason, a Season, and a Lifetime. Uh, Let's look at the first part, a reason. When someone in your life is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you have expressed. They have come to assist you through a difficulty, to provide you with guidance and support, to aid you physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They may seem like a godsend, and they are. They are there for a reason. You need them to be. Then, without any wrongdoing on your part or at an inconvenient time, this person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they just walk away. Sometimes they act up and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met. Our desire fulfilled. Their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered, and now it's time to move on. All right. That's hard, isn't it? Oh, man. Um, they're a godsend. And sometime without any wrongdoing on your part or at an inconvenient time, and may I say, in my case, when I lost my, my best friend of 25 years, it wasn't because of no wrongdoing on my, my part. I had plenty of wrongdoing. It was more that it was an inconvenient time for me. No time was convenient. I didn't see it coming. But they just walked away. They informed me that they wanted nothing more to do with me ever. Um, I had acted up in our relationship and it forced them to take a stand. They had to take a stand. 
It was very painful. But I will tell you that my relationship with this person, I have lots of fond memories. I've got a lot of really odd memories. Um, but but I was able to learn from this. And I thought it was going to kill me, and it didn't. So you may have somebody in your life that maybe it was an unhealthy relationship, you guys. Maybe you were drinking buddies or using buddies. Or maybe you were sex buddies. Maybe you were just using each other to fulfill some pri- fulfill some primal sexual desire. I don't know. Maybe you just wanted some good company. But for whatever reason, it wasn't healthy. And they had to move on. And they had to cut ties with you. It's no fun. Especially if you've changed... And you have grown and matured in your recovery and, and, and maybe they were an old drinking partner or something and, and they got better too. And you both got better and you both were getting healthy. And then out of the blue, they said, you know what? I don't want to see you anymore. Don't talk to me. Don't call me. Don't write me. Don't email me. That happens. We can't let it take us out. We can't. That's why dependence on a higher power, not a human power, but a dependence on our creator is so vital. Not dependence on other people because people will come and people will go. Here's part two. When people come into your life for a season, because your turn has come to share, grow, or learn, they bring you an experience of peace. Or perhaps they make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it. It is real. But so often it's only for a season. I can think of people in my life that have come and gone out of my life that were perhaps in my life for a few months or a few years, and then I never saw them again. Perhaps they moved on, um, they grew up, whatever. And um, our time together was healthy. It was amazing. And I'll never forget them. But just life happened, and they moved on. Uh, with the onslaught of social media, uh, it, it, it's amazing how people have gotten reacquainted and back in touch with old friends and many times it can it can be kind of uh strange to experience because you remember that person as a certain way certainly they look different and when they're not like they were when you last saw them it can be a little unnerving why once again we have expectations don't we but for for the most part, what I have found is those people in my life that were, were healthy individuals and we had a healthy relationship, even though they don't look the same, even though they don't quite you know act as immature as they did back then because they matured and grown up, um, for the most part, they're the same person. And it's just a joy. It's a joy to reflect on them. And, and that's important to do that. Uh, the third one here is uh, lifetime. It says lifetime relationships – Teach you lifetime lessons, things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Why is it important, my friends, to have a solid emotional foundation? Because we are emotional people and we are either going to have an unhealthy emotional foundation or a solid and healthy one. We all know people that were like, they are the drama queen. They are the drama king of the 12-step meeting, of the church circles, uh, uh, of, of, our, of our employers, uh, place of business. They're drama, drama, drama all the time. Why? Because they do not have a solid emotional foundation. Maybe that's you. It was me. How did I, how did I build a solid emotional foundation? I learned to become dependent upon my Heavenly Father. Not on you. Not on expectations I put on you, but on God. God expects us 
to believe him when he says, I love you just the way you are. You don't have to get cleaned up to take a bath. Come as you are. I'll do the changing where it needs to be changed. Just say yes to me. It's an amazing gift. You don't want to miss it. So we need to have a solid emotional foundation. It says in here, uh, your job is to accept the lesson, love the person, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas of your life. It is said that love is blind, but friendship is clairvoyant. Well, I, I don't know that true, true love that is ordained by, by God is necessarily blind, but certainly infatuation can be. And uh, friendships, true friendships being clairvoyant, boy, isn't that the truth? Haven't you ever known somebody that you're really close to? You knew when they were hurting or you know, knew the right time to pick up the phone. You just knew without them even being around. It's amazing. So, listen, if you're going through a really difficult time and you're really missing the person in your life that's walked away from you, maybe it was a fiancé. Maybe it was a best friend. Maybe it was a sibling, a parent, or a child. Uh, It is very possible that they may fall into the category of someone in your life for a reason. And without any wrongdoing on your part or an inconvenient time, this person said and did something that brought the relationship to an end. Don't give up. I know you may need to shut the door, but don't lock it. Because I will tell you, if they if they come around, if they've done something inappropriate and they're the ones that need to come around, you need to forgive them because unforgiveness just puts you in bondage. And, and, and if they do come around, and I know what you're saying, well, that person never will. You don't know that. You don't. And if they do, they're going to experience one of two things. Either they're going to know that you forgave them and you waited patiently for them to come around, or they're going to realize you gave up on them and you threw in the towel and said, heck with it. It's really kind of up to you. If you're that person that blew it and did something to alienate the other individual, you know if that's you. You need to go to them. You need to ask them to forgive you. Don't say you're sorry. And don't go into deep detail. You know, if you borrowed somebody's car while you were drinking and you wrapped it around a telephone pole, don't go up to them, you know, years later and say, hey, Fred, remember when I, when I, when I took your car and I started drinking and you told me not to drink while, you, while I had your car, but I did it anyway. And I was driving down the street and your girlfriend was in the car with me and we were talking about this and that. I wasn't paying attention and I crashed into to your, your front fence of your house and it, it knocked over a telephone pole and it hit your garage and crushed your car. Remember that? All you're going to do if you do that is stir up all this stuff and he's going to get angry again. A much better way is to say, hey, Fred. I need to ask you to forgive me for my irresponsible behavior when I borrowed your car. Will you forgive me? And then you've done your part. And then, of course, don't do that again, right? (laughs) I know there are different circumstances with everybody. I know some of you are going, yeah, but you don't know my situation. No, I don't, but God does. And so what reason are you going to gain from this that that person was in your life and is no longer there? What are you going to learn from this? What are you going to take away? Tell you what I learned. I learned that it is not my job, nor am I expected, to trust people. I'm going to repeat that. It's not my job, nor am I expected, to trust people. Now, people may think that I need to trust them, but God doesn't. What God wants from me is to trust him, to trust him and love people. That's a lesson that was really difficult for me to learn, but thank God I did. 
So that's the reason end of it. The season end of it, hey, people come in our lives and go out of our lives. Enjoy them while you can. Be the best friend you can be. Do not smother them. Do not make unreasonable expectations on on them. And do not demand your rights with other people. Enjoy each other. And if you're fortunate to have lifetime friends, I'm telling you, feed that friendship. Pick up that phone. Don't wait for them to do it. Sometimes just a simple text that says, was thinking of you today, praying that you're well. We think, well, that doesn't mean anything. You want to bet? It means a ton. So in closing, trust God, love people, and realize that you are powerless over over other people's choices. We can we can contribute, we can hinder, we can encourage, we can discourage, we can influence, but bottom line, people make their decisions on their own. It's their choices. It's their decisions. You and I are powerless over the final choice people make. Don't carry that and put it on your shoulders. Trust God, love people, and realize that you're powerless over other people's choices. Well, that's it. Kind of a short show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, tune in to Wednesday's show coming up, and then Friday show, of course, all here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. You can email us here at Take12Radio at Comcast.net. Uh, many thanks to Origins Recovery Centers uh, for sponsoring this show this week. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, and I'm wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Cause she's a super cat, super cat, she's super kitty, meow. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty.